Hello and welcome to another great money method in Quran 7. In today's video we are going over a vehicle that has been recommended to me and I hear only good things about. So in today's video we are doing a 700 performance points build, the Dita Maso Mangusta. If I pronounce that name wrong I am I have no clue how to actually pronounce it. So this car from what I've heard is incredible, it has great top speed cornering is a bit suspect but I mean what do we expect it's an old car so let's just get straight into the build now in order to do the build we need the D Tommaso Mangusta and luckily for us it is in the legendary dealership right now so this actually brings up a problem because it's in the legendary dealership that means it will not always be there however the vehicle does not have some astronomical price the vehicle is only priced at 245,000 so it is quite affordable however you are gonna spend a lot of money trying to upgrade this vehicle now when i say we are fully upgrading the diesel muscle we are we are adding every part we possibly can and that means we are going to be spending roughly 200,000 credits on this vehicle but fully upgraded the vehicle only produces 460 brake horsepower so some may not sound like a lot, but the fact that this vehicle doesn't weigh that much, it really balances the vehicle out. Now to just clearly go over all of the parts I have installed, we are going to head on over to the tuning sheets. Starting from the top of the first page, we are going to be looking at our tire compound. So we are going to be starting off on racing hards. Then we need to have intermediates or wet tires purchased just in case the rainfall does occur. Now you can purchase both if you'd like just to make sure that you are covered no matter how severe the weather actually gets. So we are going to begin on racing hards and you just need a backup set of tyres in case the rainfall begins. Now suspension differential, torque vectoring differential as well as your manual adjustment to your transmission does not affect your performance points at all. So if you want to manually adjust them or tune them to your liking well you can but if you just want to follow mine they are as follows so for suspension we have body height adjustment being set at 105 for both the front and the rear your anti roll bar being set at 10 for both front and rear your dampening ratio compression being set to 40 in both front and rear dampening ratio expansion being set to 50 both front and rear your natural frequency in the front is going to be 3.15 and in the rear it is going to be 3.40 so your negative camber angle is going to be 3.0 right around so that is both the front and the rear being set at 3.0 so your toe angle for the front is going to be set at 0.10 going outward and in the rear is going to be 0.20 going inward now your differential, I did not purchase one, I left a standard in because I did not see the need to actually tune the diff. In order for us to adjust the downforce of the vehicle, we need to head on over to GT Auto where we are going to purchase a front splitter and a rear wing. It doesn't matter whether you get a low, medium or high because it does not really change anything. So you need your front splitter and rear spoiler and once we have those two items, well, you are going to come back to your tuning sheets and adjust your downforce in the front to 67 and 183 in the rear. Then your fully customizable ECU is going to be set to 100%. As you can see that the ballast, ballast positioning as well as power restrictor are grayed out. That is because we did not purchase them. Then next up for transmission, we have a fully customizable racing transmission and we are just going to set that over to 280 km per hour. What happens with most of the older vehicles in Grand Slamo 7, you are able to set your gear ratios, you are able, you are, you are able to set your transmission to a specific figure and have the car actually travel well above that figure that you set it at. So for example, with us setting the car at 280 km per hour, this car is going to be able to go upwards of 300 km per hour. On the next sheet, under intake and exhaust, we have a racing air cleaner, a racing silencer, as well as a racing exhaust manifold. Then under brakes, we have 
The braking system being racing slotted disc as well as racing brake pads. Everything else was left as standard. Under drive train we have a racing clutch and flywheel. Now for the parts that we have installed to the engine, we have a bore up, stroke up, engine balance tuning, polish parts, high lift camshaft, racing crankshaft, as well as high compression pistons. And we cannot forget about our stage one, two, and three weight reduction we have also added to this vehicle. So the vehicle produces 460 brake horsepower and comes in at a weight of 971 kgs, which has a really good power to weight ratio, especially in these older vehicles, it just makes them extremely overpowered. So with the performance being set, with the performance points being set at exactly 700 points, well, we are good to go. Now, if your performance points are not exactly at 700, just be careful, depending if you added a livery, whether your, your wheels offset or set to wide. That's why personally, I like to avoid adding liveries or anything like that because it can actually throw off your tune. So, just watch out if you have added a livery because that may adjust your performance points. So, with the car being set at 700, let's go on over to our event. Now for the event that we are going to be using, we are going to be doing the WTC 700 around Le Mans. This is a 30 minute event that will earn you 825,000 credits. Now this event unlocks at the end of level 39, so if you don't, if you haven't completed menu book 39, well, you need to get it done so you can start earning some serious credits. So, with all this being said, let's jump straight into the race. Now first things first, once the race begins, you want to set your fuel map over to fuel map level 6. Now this will actually get the vehicle to go 3 laps before needing to refuel. This will give you the same fuel efficiency as the people you are competing against. Now you are competing against group 4 vehicles, so not the hardest competition, but still a really good time. Now, with the car that we are currently using, it sets an average lap time of around 4 minutes, 10 seconds, 12 seconds around there. And on the hardest difficulty, the fastest an AI can set is a 4 minute 15 second lap. So, you are going to be setting very similar lap times on fuel map level 6, which means if you do play this event on the hardest difficulty, you will be in for some seriously close racing. So if you want a really close race that is going to keep you on the edge of your seat, well, play on the hardest difficulty. But if you want an easy guaranteed win, set that difficulty over to easy. Now on fuel map level 6, the car is able to do upwards of 290 km per hour. But just remember, it is an old car, so you do need to brake a lot earlier than usual. Now, the car on fuel map level 1 is absolutely insane. And the only chance you're really going to get to experience that is on your 7th lap of this event. That way, after you fully refuel for your second pit stop, well, leave your car on fuel map level 1 and go as fast as possible, seeing speeds of upwards of 310 km per hour. Now with the car being able to get you around 3 laps, that means you are going to have to refuel twice during this event. Now there are cars with better fuel efficiency, there are cars with worse, but in my opinion, 3 laps is a really respectable amount of time that you can be out on circuit before you need to go into the fuel. Now vehicles that can go for 4 laps or do the event without pitting, you look at more your group 1 vehicles which I am whipping a tune up for so if you want to see that hit that subscribe button so you do not miss out. So the Dieter Maso Mangusta, a very fast, a very reliable metal when it comes to money grinding in Grand Slam 7. If you haven't tried it out and you have the vehicle, well give it a go and let me know what you think about it in the comment section. And if you want to see what the fastest cars for this event is, click the video on screen right now. And thanks so much for watching. Peace.